Hallelujah. I have such an expectancy. You know, uh, Eric used a word while he was, while he was transitioning, he used the word positioned. Positioned. Do you have, are you positioned to hear the word today? Yes. Now, as I br bring forth this, you know, I mean, in two days, we'll actually be celebrating 24 years as a church. Amen. 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 October 8th, October 8th of 2000 was the first church service that we had. And so that's here in just a couple of days. And we're going to celebrate next Sunday, uh, 24 years as a church. And we'll have bounce houses, food trucks. You'll hear more about that at the end of service. But there was something, as I was praying over today, and I'm not calling myself a prophet, um, but at the same time as a pastor, I believe I can hear from God Amen. on behalf of Heritage of Faith Amen. and where Heritage of Faith is going. And uh, I was expecting to just share some things next week, but more and more as I went through, throughout the week, uh, I would just felt like, no, there's, there's something here. There's something here I, I need to share for 2025. Something for us as celebrating 24 years as a church. And Eric used that word positioned. Positioned. And I believe in this next season as a church, going into our 24, celebrating 24 years, it's about being positioned to be empowered to walk in divine opportunities. Amen. I kept hearing the word divine opportunities over the last several weeks. Can you say that? Divine opportunities. Divine opportunities. The word divine means of God, like God, from God. So when something's divine, it's of God, it's from God, and it's like God. And I just have that just, just, just kind of, I'm still meditating on things, and I'm just going to share what, what the Lord put in my heart, because, because I believe we're in a season where we need, it's not just a season, but it's more like a mandate that we need to embrace the divine opportunities that God is placing in front of us. So divine, like I said, is of God, from God, and like God. So these are God opportunities. Look to your neighbor and say God opportunities. You need to know as we step in into this season going into 2025 that God is gracing us, empowering us, and blessed us for us to operate in God opportunities. God opportunities. Say it again, God opportunities. God opportunities. Hallelujah. God opportunities. Just want to take my time this morning. I don't want to, you're not in a hurry, are you? No. Sometimes the clock can be our greatest enemy. <laughs> you know, I believe in my life I've missed some divine opportunities. What have, what have I missed? I, I look at my life. What have I missed out because of fear? What have I missed out because of being upset? What have I missed out on because I was ashamed? What did I miss out on because, because I was too busy doing what I wanted to do? All the while, God was trying to whisper to me and speak to me and direct me that God has divine opportunities set aside for me, that he's got opportunities for me. This is the greatest hour of the church that, that the, the earth has ever seen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm ready to step into some divine opportunities. Amen. Hallelujah. God opportunities. God opportunities. God opportunities. Go to Genesis chapter 1. I want to read some definitions before we get into Genesis 1. I want to read some definitions of opportunities. Mm. Don't just hear this today as just a, just, a, just a normal Sunday morning message. I'm speaking to you as the priest of this house. And this is, I don't study for myself. I don't study for 
the worldwide body of Christ, so to speak, although our messages go all over the place. I study and hear from God for you. So this has to do with you. So don't just pass it off as just, oh, it's just a, just a normal. No, this is something that I believe if we lay hold of it, it's going to mark us some way. And it's going to, because see, the word is what brings about faith. The word is it brings about expectations. If you're not looking for God opportunities, you'll never walk in God opportunities. If you don't lift up your head, see, Jesus had the encounter with the disciples, you know, after he had ministered to that woman at the well, and he said, lift up your eyes for the fields are white and ready for harvest. So, so Jesus was saying, hey, look up, there's some, there's some God opportunities all around. You just need to be looking for them. But if you just come here on Sunday morning and just say, I don't know how I'm going to make it through the week. I know how you're going to make it through the week. God is setting you up for some opportunities. Opportunities to bless you, prosper you, increase you, yes. heal you, deliver you, and set you free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha I welcome God opportunities. Yes. I don't want to stay the same. A year from now, I don't want to be in the same place I am right now. Yes. Hallelujah. So look at some, here. Thank you, Valinda. Here, here's some definitions for opportun opportunities. It's an occasion that makes it possible to do something you always wanted to do. That, that's an opportunity. It's an occasion that makes it possible to do something you always wanted to do. Another definition for opportunity. It's a fa it's favorable combination of circumstances, time, and place. I'm going to teach here for a moment. An opportunity is a favorable combination of circumstances, time, and place. So if this God's opportunity, it means we're stepping into a time where the circumstances and the time of place all align. Amen. Amen. That's why we always pray over every single one of you every week. We confess over you that our church family is always in the right place, doing the right thing with the right people. Amen. That's what we pray over you, that you're in the right place at the right time. So as I was just meditating on this today, what we're actually praying over you is that you have God opportunities. Amen. Another definition for opportunities is it's a chance to better self and better others. An opportunity is a chance to better self and better others. Hallelujah. How many times have you, have you, have you, not stepped into, you see, there was a calling on my life, but if I didn't take the opportunity to make changes, would I be where I am today? Another definition for opportunities, it's this, an opportunity is a time favorable for purpose. So if we're stepping into a season and a time of God opportunities, that means we're stepping in to be able to do something we always wanted to do. We're stepping into a, we're stepping into a season where circumstances, time, and place are all happening at the same time. If it's God opportunities, then we're stepping in to a season where we're bettering ourselves and bettering others. And if it's talking about opportunities and God opportunities, then we're stepping in to a favorable time to fulfill purpose. Hallelujah. Do you realize that there's a purpose on your life? And it's more than what you realize. There's a purpose on your life and it's more than just working eight to 10 to 12 hours a day. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, we need to work. That's the Bible is for work with the, the diligent hand makes rich. But I'm just saying, saying there's something more than just what your occupation is. What about the God appointments in your workplace? What are the God appointments everywhere you go? What about the God appointments in your church? What about the God appointments in our community? Hallelujah. So we are empowered. 2025 and this year as a church will be about being empowered to walk in God opportunities. Let's look here in Genesis chapter one. Say the word blessed. blessed. When, we, when we talk about, when I talk about the word blessed today, 
I want us to refer to it. We can think of it in multi-dimensional ways. We know the word blessed means empowered to prosper. We know the word blessed. Blessed can also, if you're, if you're favored, then you've been blessed with favor. The word blessed, we can also define it as the anointing. The word blessing, we can also refer to it as ability. So when we talk about this word blessed today, understand it's God's ability on your life to do what you couldn't do before. You can only go so far with your own hands. You can only go so far with your intellect. You can only go so, so far with what you can do. But I'm telling you, when you tap into the blessing, you tap into grace, you tap into the anointing, and you tap into God ability, you will go farther than you could ever go, on, than, than you could on yourself. Right. Hallelujah. God opportunities. God opportunity. God has opportunities for you. There's God opportunities. God opportunities for your business to increase. God opportunities. God opportunities. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Genesis 1, verse 26, it's going to teach here for a little bit. The Word of God is important. And I want you to hear this message with a sense of importance today. Verse 26 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth. Say all the earth. All the earth. And over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them. So he created them and then he blessed them. He created them and he empowered them. He created them, he gave them ability. He created them, he anointed them. He created them, he gifted them. He gifted them, he empowered them, he equipped them because there was an opportunity. So verse 28 again, then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, subdue it. Subdue it. Say the word, sub, say subdue. subdue. So here he blessed them. And what was the blessing for? It was for them to do the next part, to multiply, to fill the earth and subdue it. The word subdue means to, to take something by force. He was telling them to subdue it and take it by force, meaning this is going to be something they were going to have to do. It was something that God wasn't going to do, but it was something they were going to do. God wasn't going to fill the earth. They were going to fill the earth. They were going to multiply the earth and they were to subdue the earth. God was giving them the opportunity to rule and to reign. God was giving them the opportunity Hallelujah, to be just like him in the earth. When he said he made them in his image, it means exact duplication in kind. Now, I am not God, but I'm just like God. See, that, that, that really upset some religious people. God's the one that said, I was made in his likeness and image. If you got a problem with me calling myself just like God, then you take it up with Genesis chapter one. See, most people live defeated because they don't know who they are. They live in a continued broken state and a continued places of addiction because they don't know how to subdue it. See, it's time for us to subdue some things. Hallelujah. The, 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 the earth, the earth is in the place that it is because the Christians let go of their place of subduing some things. Hallelujah. 
when the church doesn't stand up against abortion and platform abortion, we've let, uh, we've let our authority go. You know, that's my position. And I'm not going to make, make any apologies for it. That's right. That's right. And when it comes to election time, and I wasn't necessarily going to go th this way, but when it comes to election time, when you're choosing someone to be in office, it's not a personality contest. It's not a personality contest. There's a lot of things I don't like. But the thing is, is you can put a smile on your face and sound kind, but still be a Marxist. Anti-God. It's not a popularity contest. So I'm asking you that you need to seek the Lord on seeking things, not about personality. Because, yeah, there's a lot of things, personality, you may not like with someone, but the thing is, you can have a great personality on the outside, what Jesus told the Pharisees, but be full of dead men's bones. You can look good on the outside, but still not be full of life. We have to subdue as believers in the earth. Yes. When people leave the church, I, I, hey, that's, I'm not here to please people. I'm not here to be afraid of man or what people think. I have to speak for righteousness. And you say, well, what about this and what about this? You don't know what's going on behind other things. You see, Adam and Eve were to replenish the earth, fill the earth, and subdue it. I believe the biggest problem, and this is my opinion, the biggest problem that took place was Adam and Eve stayed in the garden and didn't replenish and subdue the earth. The garden was supposed to be a place of rest. The garden was supposed to be a place of, of walking with God. The garden was a place to a retreat because the word Eden means pleasure. And I believe that's what Eden was all about. I believe Eden was a place they were to go back to when they, were, when they came back from multiplying, filling the earth and subduing it. So what happened is Adam and Eve didn't multiply and they didn't replenish until after they got out of the garden. How come they weren't multiplying before? Because they got comfortable with pleasure. They got comfortable with Eden and therefore they didn't subdue it. And instead they hung out of a tree of a knowledge of good and evil and all of a sudden had arguments with Satan about doctrine. I think a lot of times the church in modern day, and this is my opinion, I think the modern day church can be a lot like Eden. We can come to church, we can hear something good, we can walk with God, we can feel God's presence, we can, we can enjoy his presence, but we don't leave here and go out and subdue the earth. We are not going out and multiplying ourselves and replenishing the earth and subduing it. So the Lord put strong in my heart as heritage of faith, this next year is going to be about being empowered to operate in God opportunities. The blessing was for them to, to be empowered to multiply and subdue the earth. That's what the blessing's for. The blessing isn't just so we can multiply and increase. That's God's heart. God's heart is to increase increase his belief. We're, I'm a covenant child of God and it's his desire to increase me. When the blessing is on something, it increases. Yes. Amen. God didn't put the curse on Adam and Eve until after, after the fall took place. I 
Let's go to, uh, let's go to Genesis 13. Genesis 13. Let's talk about the blessing and what the blessing does. Thank you, Father. Now, in the story, um, just tell a bit of the story first, and we'll, we'll get it here in, uh, later on in, here in Genesis 13. Hallelujah. Here, Abraham had already left where he's from, and, and God told Abraham that when he left, that God would multiply him, that God would increase him, make his name great, Right? And he gets to the next chapter. The next chapter, him and Lot are, have so many, so many servants and so many cattle, so many animal that, 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 that God says pretty much, you all have to separate so there won't be any strife. That you, you, you need to separate. So Abraham was increasing. He was subduing some things. He was multiplying because of what? The blessing, because of the anointing, because of the grace, because of God's ability. He was taking the opportunity, the God opportunity, to increase what God had given him. So they separate, and, and he looks at Lot, he goes, Lot, why don't you, well, I'll let you choose first. And so Lot's like, me first? Lot looks around and he's like, that looks barren. That looks great. I think I'll choose that. He chose the best. He chose what looked, looked great. He, he chose the direction towards Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> now, if you, if you look at one of the verses in here, actually in um, verse 10, he says, and Lot lifted his eyes, saw the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, get this, like the garden of the Lord. Meaning this area that he was choosing was just like the garden of the Lord. And the only way to be to describe the garden of the Lord would have been in Genesis 2, Eden. So that's how good it looked. It looked just like maybe something that Adam and Eve had seen, just like that. And that's what Lot chooses. Now let's, let's look at what the blessing does. Verse 12. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan. The word Canaan means humiliation. Humiliation. It's kind of like, you know, it's like when you make a decision on behalf of God and, and you're saying, I'm doing this, he chose that, it can put you in a place where you feel, God, how come you're not working for me? He chose that. Here, I'm, I'm stuck with this and I'm in Canaan and it means a place of humiliation. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. But the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. Verse 14, and the Lord said to Abram after, after, it was after Lot had separated from him, lift up your eyes now. Say God opportunity. Lift up your eyes now. And I wrote in my, my, my Bible, God opportunity. See, because when you're in the midst of humiliation, don't get your eyes on the humiliation. Don't get your eyes on what's not working. Don't get your eyes on the setback. Get your eyes on the God opportunity. There's got to be a God opportunity. Why? Because the blessing is on my life. Favor is on my life. The grace of God is on my life. God's ability is on my life. I am a child of the King. Hallelujah. I'm a child of the King. Lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are. Northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land you will see, I give it to you. Now, it's interesting if you're going north, south, east, and west. That means ultimately the land you gave Lot is yours too. <laughs> Think about it. I mean, you know, if I keep going as far as I can go east, eventually you'll come back over where you started. So it's interesting. You look this way, that way, this way, that way. Everything you see. And it's interesting. He says, walk through it. 
So the thing is right now, I can only see so many miles. But see, the more I walk, I can see farther. Walk through it. Meaning, meaning as you walk this way, the thing is, as I keep walking, the horizon never ends. And so this is a God opportunity. And, and, and the thing is, is we have to lift up our eyes because there's some things all around you that's going to take place, but we need to be ready, expecting and believing for God opportunities. Say God opportunities. Hallelujah. Verse 15, for all the land which you see, I give it to you and your descendants. Meaning this isn't just with you, but it's your descendants. Verse 16, and I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Then he says, arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. See, there comes a time where you, you, you gotta stop wishing for something better and you need to rise and get up off your butt and start doing something new. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get it. You need to stop complaining, arise and walk. Get sitting here and complain about, Abraham could complain about why Lot, Lot got, man, I should not have given that to Lot. But then look, look, look eight, verse 18. Then Abraham moved his tent, went and dwelt by the terebinth trees of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and he built an altar to the Lord. So he went from Canaan to Hebron. The word Hebron means to be in association with, and it means to be united to. You see, God plus man is a majority. So when God, when, when Abraham hooked up with God and went to Hebron, he went to the terebin trees of Mamre, and the word Mamre means the riches of God's goodness. It's the riches of God goodness. So, so Abraham, get that Abraham went from a place of humiliation to the terebin trees of Mamre, the riches of God's goodness, because he was now in association with God. The riches of God's goodness. And our, our apostle founded that. Our apostle declared that and decreed to that years ago about show me your glory. Show me your goodness. Show me your love. Show me your power. Hallelujah. Show me your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can just, let's lift our hands. Just say this out to me. Father God, I thank you for God opportunities. Thank you, Lord. I lift up my eyes. I choose to walk with you to know your glory to know your goodness, to know your presence, to know your power. As I seek after you, I will walk in God opportunities in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God opportunities. Hallelujah. 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 So this next year for Heritage of Faith, hallelujah, it's a year of God opportunities. God's going to give us wisdom about how to impact our community. God's going to give us wisdom. God's going to give us direction. God's going to give us guidance. Hallelujah. How to expand and how to increase to the right hand and to the left. Hallelujah. Go to, go to Joshua chapter 13. Joshua 13. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Joshua 13, look at verse one. Now Joshua was old, advanced in years, and the Lord said to him, you're old. <laughs> it's like that, you're old. <laughs> I mean, you must be old if God's calling you old. <laughs> That's how you like to start that, that sentence? <laughs> Justin, you're old. <laughs> you're old, advanced in years, and there remains very much land yet to be possessed. Woo! Hallelujah. 
I, I, I don't, it doesn't matter how old you are. I want you to know that you still have some land to possess. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It, it doesn't matter how, when you started serving God, I want you to know there's some land for you to possess. Yeah. Hallelujah. There's some land for you to possess. There's some land for you to possess. You see, because what was, what was happening and what took place here is, is God had told them to possess land a long time ago. And they send out spies and two come back with a good report and 10 come back with an evil report. But it's interesting, the 10 that came back with an evil report didn't step into the God opportunity. They never made it in to the God opportunity. They just had a really long walk. Go to, go to the next chapter. I don't want to walk the next 30 years of my life and not fulfill the God opportunities. I don't want to go another year with things staying the same way as they have been in some areas of my life. Are you fed up with normal? Are you fed up with ordinary? Are you fed up with, with, with just the same old, same old? I'm fed up with it. Some people like to hold on to their discouragement. I'm going to get mine. How, here's your faith. I'm telling you this next year. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. If you could just see what God sees for your next year. Yeah. Hallelujah. God opportunities. Look at verse six. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua and Gilgal and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, and said to him, you know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God concerning you and me in Kadesh and Barnea. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought back word to him and it was in, as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. You gotta, there's some people you need to stop listening to. There's some TV shows you need to stop listening to. There's some news channels you need to stop listening to. There's some podcasts you need to stop listening to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. But I, but I, say but I. He says, but I wholly follow the Lord my God. Verse nine, so Moses swore on that day saying, surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance. Surely, kind of like without a doubt, matter of fact, it's gonna happen. Take it to the bank. Sure, the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever. So not just yours, it's your children's. You need to see that your destiny is not just about you, but it's about generations after you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And children forever because... It shall be your inheritance and your children's forever because you have what? Holy followed the Lord, my God. And now, say and now. Amen. Then it says, behold, the Lord has kept me alive. As he said these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke the word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, say now. now. Here am I this day, 85 years old, as yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war. Hallelujah. He, he got tired of walking. He's ready to fight. Hallelujah. I, I'm tired. I want my promised land. I want my God opportunity. Hallelujah. Hall I want everything that God has in store for me. Hallelujah. 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 The violent take it by force. Hallelujah. 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 That, that violent, that, that's a no quit, that no giving up. That is mine and no one's going to take it from me. Hallelujah. Whoo. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am as strong this day as on that day that Moses sent me. 
Hallelujah. Just as my strength was, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain. Hallelujah. Now, everything I said before this was my introduction. Like you say, you're not in a hurry today, right? Just hallelujah. Walking in God appointments in this next year is about taking territory and advancing the kingdom. See, what was it? What, what, what was it he said, give me this mountain? Yes, sir. Come on. It's about territory. Come on. It's about territory. God is requiring us and requiring you and I to take territory. And we take territory because it's about advancing the kingdom. Now, therefore, give me this mountain, give me this territory of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how Anakim were there, the giants, and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able, I shall be able, that's grace, that's ability, that's the blessing, that's the anointing. Hallelujah, I will have grace, I'll have ability to drive them out as the Lord said. Meaning God wasn't going to get rid of the enemy, he was. Give me this mountain. He prepared me for war. And he said, I'm going to drive them out. I shall be able to drive them out, said the Lord. The Lord said he could drive out the enemy. I don't think you really fully see that. The Lord said you could drive out the enemy. That's it. That's good. See, the God appointments are all about us taking territory not just so we can have a life of ease. God gave us faith to dominate. He didn't get faith so we could just have ease. And if you just want an easy Christianity, this next year in this church will not be for you. Because we are a heritage of faith and our faith is all about to dominate. And it's not dominating people. It's dominating the enemy. This isn't about us being superior to any other man. It's about being superior to the enemy's kingdom. This is not about us, us and them as in people in our community. It's about us against the enemy, the God of this world. I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. Verse 13, and Joshua did what? Blessed him. So Joshua was was acting on behalf of God because God's the one that told Joshua to bless each family and each house and give them a portion of land. So Joshua was acting on behalf of God. And, And even Moses said, I place the same wisdom and same anointing and same grace on you, Joshua, that was on me. So now Joshua's operating in the same anointing and blessing and anointing and ability and favor that was upon Moses. And, and Joshua is taking that anointing and now releasing it upon Caleb. Yes. And Joshua blessed him and gave what? Hebron. Didn't we just see Hebron a minute ago? Divine association. Now get this, he gave him Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as his inheritance. Hebron, therefore, became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, to this day, because what? He wholly followed the Lord. And the name Hebron formerly was Kirjath Arba. And what was Kirjath Arba? It was, they changed the name of Mamre, that was with that to, to Arba because Arba was the strongest giant of the four kings of the Anakin. 
And he was the strongest. He was the biggest. He was the mightiest warrior of all the giants. And this would be the giant that Goliath came from. And they called it Kirjath Arba. But if you go to Genesis 35, they call Kirjath Armory as it was formerly known Mamre. So here, Caleb, because he wholly followed the Lord, he took up the God appointment. And what happened? He went to Hebron and he also went to Mamre and he was in relationship with God and God showed him the riches of God's goodness. Wow. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I'm telling you, when you walk with God, when you wholly follow the Lord, and when you understand his blessings on your life, he's going to take you to Mamre. He's going to take you to a place where you see the riches of his goodness. You see his favor. You see his ability. Hallelujah. That's what the blessing does. Yes, sir. That's good. Woo! <laughs> mm. Some of you aren't excited as I am. Mm. I have so much more. Jesus. Lord. Thank you, Father. Can you, can you give me 15 more minutes? Go to Second um, Second Corinthians 1. Now take everything that I've said so far and listen to the blessing in another. Now let's, let's look at the blessing today. Whoo, man, just, just hold on. Mm. Woo, mm, I think we need a praise break. <laughs> Hallelujah, thank you, Father. Hallelujah, thank you for God opportunities. Thank you for God opportunities. Hallelujah. We thank you for God opportunities. Woo! God opportunities. Hallelujah. That we're going to take territory. We're going to advance the kingdom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. <laughs> Whoa! Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Woo! Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians one. Mm. Second Corinthians one. Verse 20. For all the promises of God. Now, it's interesting that if you look at Deuteronomy 28, they call the promises blessings. For all the promises of God in him, in him are yes, and in him, amen. Yes. To the glory of God, meaning everything, every God appointment is about glorifying God. Yes. Walking in the blessing, the favor, the ability, it's all about to glorify him. Yes. Right. To the glory of God, what? Through what? Us. Yes. It's through us. It's not through Jesus, it's through us. Yeah. It's through us, the church, it's through us. Yeah. Look to your neighbor and say, it's through me. It's through me. Look to the other and say, it's through you. It's through Verse 21, now he, now he, say now. Now, now he who establishes us right. with you in Christ has anointed us, God. is God, who also has sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. So I, so I want you to know, <laughs> mm. you've been established, you've been anointed, and you've been sealed. Hallelujah. You've been established, you've been anointed, and you've been sealed with the blessing. You've been established, you've been anointed, and you've been sealed with ability. You've been, a, you've been established, you've been anointed, and you've been sealed 
with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And it says the Holy Ghost is our seal. Hallelujah. The seal represents whose you are. The seal he's referring to is in that day when they would send a, a decree out, they would send a letter out and a king or the, 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 uh, the emperor of, of Rome, the emperor would all of a sudden take this decree and make this decree and he would take this seal and he would, he would stick it to it, stick it to the document and would have the initials on it so they know where this came from. So you need, you need to know, if you don't already know, hallelujah, the world needs to see where you've come from. Because you have been established by, you've been anointed by, hallelujah, and you have been sealed with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go to Galatians 3. Galatians 3. Mm. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Adrian, come here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. Lord, the ministry that he has cried out for, that this is just a season he's in, and even as he walks in the season and you prosper his hand and increase his hand, I thank you that ministry, no, no, you did not push ministry to the side. You are ministry. You're ministry waiting to happen. So I bind any and all discouragement off of you right now. Hallelujah. 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 Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the things you saw, <laughs> you saw. And the things you saw, you will walk in. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Woo Hallelujah. 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 Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Galatians 3. Hallelujah. Christ, verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham. Remember what he tell him in Genesis 3? That just like the dust, so will your descendants be. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentile in Christ Jesus, that we might receive what? Promise. That's another word for promise, the blessing. Amen. And what was the promise and the blessing the Spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. We've been anointed by the Holy Spirit for God opportunities. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. I'll try to close here. Acts, Acts 1. Acts 1. Acts 1. <laughs> Hallelujah. Worship team, you can come up. But I'm, I'm not done yet. I'm, I'm just going to go as long as, <laughs> long as we... Mm. Because there's, there's going to be a release in here. And also those watching by, by way of online. You, you're... Um, now, if we, if we were, we, I had a bunch of other scriptures in my notes, but if you go to Luke 24, he tells them about being, that go there, you've been witnesses of these things, and talk about the salvation experience. And he tells them, go to Jerusalem until you're endued with power from one high. And, and when I've talked about the Holy Ghost, some of you remember when I talked about the Holy Ghost, that word endued means to die like a garment. So when it says go be endued with power, it's not just, it's not just like a little sprinkle. It's not just like, ooh, it's not a little goosebump. It's not like a little, it's a lot more than a little something, something. 
endued. When, when you dye a garment and you take that out and it dries, you can't get it out of it because it's been dipped in it. It's been, it's been, it's, it's full of it. Yes, it's overflowing with it. And all of a sudden, you know, when you, when you dip that garment and, and like if, if I have a, I have this blue shirt on, but I dip it into, into like black dye, so to speak, what happens is you, you can no longer see the other thing. You can no longer, you can never recognize what it was before. So when the Holy Ghost comes on you, it makes you something you were never, never, you were never before. Hallelujah. And if you allow it, it will change how you walk and talk. It will change how you love. It will change how you talk to people, how you do things. It will change how you think. It will change how you see your future. So this was the anointing. This was, this was the Holy Ghost. Go to Jerusalem and tell you are endued with power from on high. Why? He said, and he, we know other verses. He says, it's expedient that I go away because if I don't go away, the comforter can't come. Meaning you need this. You got to have it. It's going to give you the advantage. Hallelujah. Because God is setting up some God appointments this year. And I'm telling you, we need to know what we're filled with. Hallelujah. You find Acts chapter one. Acts chapter one, verse four. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the father. I mean, you need this. You can't go into the next God opportunity until you get this. You don't need to leave here today until you get this. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water. Hallelujah. He immersed you in one thing, but you shall be baptized with something else. Yes, baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Say the word territory. territory. They were, they, this, is, this next scripture here, I want you to change how you've seen it before and now start seeing this as territory. territory. This is about territory. Yes, sir. They're, they're kind of worried. Are we going to get our territory back? Yeah. Are you going to restore to us what's rightfully ours? Yes, sir. And he says, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Lord had put in his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be witnesses to me. Other translations say witnesses of me, witnesses for me. What? In Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So they were to go to Jerusalem, be filled with power. Why? Because there were God opportunities to take territory. Being filled with the Holy Ghost wasn't just so we could say we're charismatic. Being filled with the Holy Ghost was about taking territory. From, from Judea, Samaria, Jerusalem, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Meaning this empowerment that's coming upon your life is to impact all the nations and all the world. Crowley, Texas, South Fort Worth. Hallelujah. Go get empowered with this grace. Go get empowered with this blessing. Get empowered with this. And when you do, you're going to be my witnesses. And I'm going to set up divine appointments, God appointments, things you've always wanted to do. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Just two more things real quick. Matthew 28. I spoke some of this to Pastor Annette the other, the other day after I had a Friday afternoon but then yesterday, as I was preparing, this just came up, and I was looking. I wrote on my paper, real big, God opportunities. I just wrote it real big on my paper, God opportunities. And then I just saw something by the Spirit, and he took me to, to this scripture. Matthew 28, verse 16 
Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee to the mountains which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority, that's the blessing, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth, go. When I saw, I wrote God opportunities on my paper, it just illuminated. I didn't see, I didn't see G-O-D anymore and I didn't see opportunities. I just saw G and O. I just saw, I just saw G and O, God opportunities. I, that's, that's all, I just saw God opportunities. So, so when he, <laughs> woo, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth, God opportunities. Hallelujah. 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 God <laughs> opportunities. Woo. <laughs> so, so the title of today's message is, let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Hallelujah. God opportunities. <laughs> God. So when he said go into all the world, he was saying, hey, just go. When you go, God opportunities are going to happen. Go to Mark 16. Stand to your feet. You can just put your Bibles down. Mm. Hallelujah. Taking territory. Advancing the kingdom. Hallelujah. This next year as a church, and I'm sure the Lord will build upon this. Hallelujah. But this next year as a church, as we go into a new year, as a uh, celebrating our anniversary, hallelujah, this next year is going to be about God opportunities, and it's going to be about uh, taking territory and advancing the kingdom. Mark 16 says, says later, verse 14 says, later he appeared to them, to the 11, as they sat at the table. And he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart. Hallelujah. Love can rebuke hardness of heart. Love can rebuke unbelief. Because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. He said to them, go. Man, the great commission is one great big God opportunity. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs, these signs will follow those who believe in my name. You see, when you pray for someone, it's a God opportunity. When you're around someone that's demon-possessed, it's a God opportunity. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they'll recover. When we think about all this, taking territory, the God opportunity is going into all the world, preaching the gospel. But also, when he says, lay hands on the sick and see them recover, that's taking territory. Your body was made out of the dust of the ground. That's territory. Terra. Terra firma the land. Hallelujah. So when you lay hands on the sick, hallelujah, <laughs> you're subduing. Hallelujah. You're taking, you're taking territory and you're advancing the kingdom. <sighs> At this point, I'm not sure where to stop. Hallelujah. <laughs> 2025. I'm not calling myself a prophet. Please hear me. But I have it strong in my spirit that he's positioning us 
to operate in his ability to fulfill God opportunities. Yeah.